Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Again, I want to welcome everybody. We're uh, this is uh, Josh Haman. I'm uh, an orthopedic surgeon at Columbia Orthopedic Group. Uh, tonight's seminar is on needle arthroscopy, entitled "Are You a Candidate for Needle Arthroscopy?" So hopefully um, you are here because you are interested in what the heck is needle arthroscopy and maybe something for you uh, and something that we can help you with. I see there's a few people still coming into the waiting room, so I'm going to give it just another minute. So everybody can see the screen okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll, get, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, today, uh, again, we're talking about needle arthroscopy. And I wanted just to start by introducing myself. Uh, I am a sports medicine orthopedic surgeon here at Columbia Orthopedic Group. Um, this is a picture of my family, my wife and three kids. Um, we live here in Columbia, Missouri. We've been here for over five years now and uh, have really enjoyed being in Columbia. Um, I'm originally from Iowa. Uh, we were in Iowa for a little while after my training and now back in Columbia. I trained at uh, University of Iowa in my undergrad. Uh, I did, came to Columbia for medical school and stayed for residency. And then I went and did a, a fellowship at um, University of Virginia. And my practice is uh, focused on sports medicine and arthroscopy, mainly in knee and shoulder arthroscopy. And uh, this has kind of led me into this uh, area of needle arthroscopy and something I'm really excited about, something that I think can really help people. And i um, really uh, happy that you guys are here tonight to uh, learn about it. Uh, here in the office at Columbia Orthopedic Group, I have uh, a, a great team. Uh, specifically Bill Bachoven, who's my PA, Jamie, who's my uh, secretary, and Natasha, who is my medical assistant, along with all the other great people here at Columbia Orthopedic Group. Uh, but I certainly want to give a shout out to those uh, folks for all their help they give me. Um, <clears throat> so uh, with that being said, let's talk about needle arthroscopy. And I want to begin with what is arthroscopy and, and simply stated it's, it's a way to scope inside of a joint. And arthroscopy began around 1919. And this is a picture on the screen of, uh, of a, a, an old arthroscopy. It, it kind of this was state of the art in the 1920s and 30s when, when these people would, would literally stick a camera or a little lens inside the knee joint. And why this was so um, revolutionary is because back before arthroscopy, the surgeon would have to make a big long incision across the front of the joint, like this knee, he would have to make a, you know, a really large incision and have to move the tissues and cut through the muscles and tendons to get into the uh, areas they needed to get to. So in some ways, the surgery was actually worse than the, than the problem. And so uh, with development of the arthroscopy, we're able to look inside the joint with little um, uh, tissue injury, and we're able to do much more uh, surgery with less invasive uh, techniques. And over time, <clears throat> we developed cameras with uh, uh, the ability to project onto a monitor, and then the cameras got better and better to where we're now seeing things inside the joint in 4K um, uh, visualization. And so it really has uh, evolved. And, and now the next great step in arthroscopy is the needle arthroscopy. And essentially this is a smaller instrumentation that allows us to look inside the joint without even having to make a cut, without even having to use a scalpel or make an incision. We can look inside the joint with a needle uh, or with a camera the size of a needle. And it really allows us to do some incredible things. Um, so, uh, you know, again, this is a, a needle-sized a arthroscopy, or needle-sized scope, and the patient that has the procedure is able to be awake if they wish, 
Uh, we can dynamically evaluate the joint and it, it really can revolutionize uh, how we are doing things. So next slide is, is just showing you a picture of a needle uh, a scope, a nanoscope, which is 1.9 millimeters in size. So if you compare that to a pencil, it's incredibly small. Um, and therefore we can, we can numb up the skin and, and use the, a needle to enter into the joint and uh, no incisions are needed. Um, you know, the benefits of, the, of a needle uh, arthroscopy are, you know, pretty, pretty numerous. I think the biggest thing is that we can diagnose problems in the knee joint at real time. Um, we can go in there and dynamically look at the joint, meaning uh, the patient is awake and able to move their, uh, their knee uh, on command. And so we can, we can uh, watch how the structures are moving while we're doing our needle arthroscopy. We're able to probe and feel the tissues and can ask the patient while, they're do while we're doing the surgery if that hurts. If we uh, remove a piece of tissue, does that take away their pain? And so you can have pretty immediate pain relief uh, during the surgery. It also allows us to do better diagnostics as like cartilage damage or uh, uh, other tissue problems um, in the joint uh, at the time. And so it, it, rather than kind of guessing on an MRI or an X-ray, we can, we can directly look at the tissues and, and make a diagnosis. And with that being said, this is a great option uh, for people who can't have MRIs, someone who has a metal implant or someone who's claustrophobic and, and just doesn't want to do an MRI. We can elect to forego an MRI and just go ahead and look inside the joint with our needle arthroscopy. And so again, the benefits here are, are multiple. What can we do other than just diagnosis with a needle arthroscopy? We can look and confirm meniscus tears and trim out or, or fix a meniscus tear, even do repairs. We can look for loose pieces, loose bone fragments within the joint, assess for torn cartilage and remove loose, loose pieces of cartilage. We can remove inflammation or cysts. We can look at ligaments uh, or take care of scar tissue within the knee joint. Um, and again, tonight we're introducing the needle arthroscopy. So reasons why you would need a, a knee arthroscopy would be injuries or falls, other accidents that, that have caused damage into the joint, wear and tear or arthritis in the knee joint that may be a problem and causing mechanical symptoms. And so that would uh, be something that we would fix with an arth a needle arthroscopy. If you have popping, swelling, other issues, that would be somebody who we'd want to talk to about potentially uh, a, a, a needle arthroscopy. And then, you know, when is it time to think about uh, a, knee or a, a surgery, like a nano arthroscopy, a needle arthroscopy? Um, you know, if you've had knee pain for some time, it's not getting better, you've been, you've been dealing with it, uh, and uh, maybe you've had injections or taken medicines or done physical therapy, but we're still not able to to uh, get your knee better. Maybe you've, uh, this is affecting the way you live your life and, and you just can't do the fun things that you normally would do with, with your knee. Uh, that would be time to think about surgery. And so again, I, I think that the, the needle arthroscopy is something for the person who's tried to get their knee better on their own, but, but yet just can't get there. And this really reduces the barriers to surgery because you can get your diagnosis, we can be treated very quickly and have a, a very fast recovery. And so again, something that we want to uh, um, uh, talk about knee arthroscopy for you. Uh, obviously this is a picture showing someone in the knee ar a needle arthroscopy. We have our cameras, we have the screen showing, uh, showing the tissues. And so we can, we can, you know, as we're doing the surgery, we're making our diagnosis and the patient is, is able to see this right, right there. They don't have to be asleep. They don't have to wake up and be groggy. And then we tell them what's happened inside their knee joint during the surgery. They're awake and watching it. And I think that's very powerful. I think the education process for me as a physician to the patient during the surgery is, is really fascinating because we can, we can tell you uh, at the time of the surgery what's going on and how we're going to fix it. 
we certainly are able to take pictures. We certainly are able to take videos of the arthroscopy so we can show them and review them later. But, but the real-time diagnosis is, is a really key thing for the needle arthroscopy. And then while we're, while we're doing your surgery, we can, we can take care of things. We can talk about the plan on what we need to do to get you better uh, all during the procedure. And then it's very, obviously looking at the tissue is, is the most diagnostic and accurate way to, uh, to take a look at the knee. And so these needle arthroscopies uh, are, are extremely effective and accurate. Um, so as we've kind of introduced needle arthroscopy, I, I think what will likely uh, tell the story the best is to show you what, what happens. Uh, and, and I've asked a patient of mine, uh, Colder Evans, uh, we've taken some videos of him and, and put this together to show what a needle arthroscopy would be like. This is, this is a patient of mine who I'd treated for a while. He'd been having knee pain and swelling. We, he developed some scar tissue in his knee, and so we discussed doing a needle arthroscopy, and he, he elected to proceed. And so what I'm going to show next is a video of his surgery and how it went. And, uh, and so I'm going to let the video play and kind of speak for itself for a while, and we'll talk about it in just a second. So hopefully that video came through okay. Um, I think it's a pretty incredible video because it it's able to t show how how the needle arthroscopy can really um, can really you know acute or accurately diagnose and and immediately treat and get the patient better. So so this is a little breakdown of the timeline for a, a, a needle arthroscopy just kind of uh, here on the screen. Um, you know, what you saw in the videos before the surgery, I was able to talk with the patient. We, we discussed the plan. We discussed why we were doing it. We discussed, uh, you know, how things would go during the surgery. And then we injected some local anesthesia. We also used some oral medicines to help with inflammation and some pain right before surgery, but mostly it's the local anesthetic injection. Um, and then we take the patient back to the to the room to the procedure room where we do the surgery. We have the um, monitors on the wall to to show both myself what's happening in the knee, but the patient is able to watch. And then I think the one of the best things is again you're awake. You're able to talk with the, with me about what's going on in the surgery. And right afterwards, as you saw, Colder was able to stand up. Uh, he was able to walk out of the operating room. He could already tell a difference in his knee joint. Um, and uh, I think that that is, uh, you know, a really big benefit. With the local anesthesia, there's, there's minimal pain after the surgery because things are numb. Uh, you don't have to have pain and, as you're driving home. And so certainly a, a, a really uh, incredible 
a video which I think tells the story of a needle arthroscopy. Um, so the next step is um, how do I know if I'm a candidate for needle arthroscopy? You know, obviously part of it is, is if you're here, you're, you're wondering about needle arthroscopy. And I think if you're hearing these, these things that your knee's bothering you, you're having symptoms that haven't been any better. I think we typically talk in the clinic. We have you meet with me in the clinic uh, for an appointment. Uh, we can review your previous studies like x-rays or MRIs or, or any therapy notes that you may have had in the past. Um, and we're able to, to talk about, you know, whether or not this is a procedure for you. Um, I wanted to go through a couple common questions about needle arthroscopy um, that I think you guys are already probably wondering about. And if you have more questions, uh, feel free to use the question uh, on the on the Zoom, but how long does this normally take? Typically, um, uh, the procedure is about 20 minutes in length. It may be 30 to 40 minutes, depending on what we have to do and, and how long each procedure would take. But this is at the surgery center in, uh, uh, here at Columbia Orthopedic Group. Uh, this has been rated one of the best and the best uh, ortho, uh, surgery center in the state of Missouri, uh, a couple years running now. Um, and we've, uh, we can really get you in for the surgery, uh, maybe about an hour or so before the surgical time. The surgery itself lasts, say, 30 minutes, and typically patients are out uh, walking to their car about 20 to 30 minutes after the procedure. So it's, it's certainly not an all-day thing, uh, and I think that, um, you know, I think one of the barriers for people to sign up for surgery is I don't want to give up an entire day. And with a needle arthroscopy, you certainly wouldn't have to do that. Um, and and it, I think this slide is is the, the question uh, that, that really has kind of got me into doing needle arthroscopy and why I'm so excited about it is because we don't, it does not require a general anesthetic and you can do a local anesthesia. Of course, we can do needle arthroscopy under a, a general anesthetic. Uh, we can do a standard arthroscopy with, um, with incisions and everything, but if, uh, if you want to have the local anesthesia, the needle arthroscopy, you don't have to uh, feel, um, you know, don't have to go undergo the recovery of anesthesia. You're awake during the procedure and you're, you're able to watch the procedure if you wish. We can certainly talk about anything else during the surgery if you want. I've certainly heard plenty of stories uh, while we've been doing uh, needle arthroscopy. We've had patients talk about their vacations, talk about their uh, activities like pickleball or, or anything they like to do. Um, uh, but again, you can be awake and, and we can discuss uh, your knee while we're doing the surgery. Um, and here, as you saw, um, our patient on the video, he was able to walk out of the operating room. We essentially just have to, after surgery, uh, take a blood pressure, make sure you're doing okay. Uh, you change your clothes, you put your shoes on. We talk about some of the post-operative uh, instructions and you're really out the door. So uh, it, it's, it's a very quick recovery. After surgery, there is some soreness around the site, usually for the first couple of days. The next day, people have swelling and soreness as the numbing medicine wears off. There is a little bit of, a, of kind of a rebound type pain. Um, but that usually doesn't last for very long. Um, we have band-aids, there's no sutures, there's no incisions. Uh, and so very minimal uh, uh, bandages to worry about. Uh, we can have you walking and, and, and doing your activities very quickly. Patients come back and tell me they're doing some incredible things already after surgery, uh, walking around the block. Some people are walking up to a mile or more, which uh, is not always typical, but these people are, are really doing well. And it's it, it um, has been incredible to watch how people are recovering so fast. Typically after surgery, you're gonna come back and see me in the clinic about 10 days after surgery. We can go over the procedure. We can talk about the next steps of recovery, whether that's therapy or exercises or how we need to get, get you back into your activities. Um, other common questions, can I drive after surgery? 
We typically would want you to have a driver to take you home after surgery, uh, but people are able to drive, uh, you know, the next day, depending on, on exactly what they've had done. Some people, because of the local anesthetic, are able to return to work that day. Some people work from home, and so they go back home and try and get a few hours of work done after their procedure. Some people are back in the office the next day because uh, their knee feels already so much better, and they're able to get back into their office and do a lot of work. Um, you know, typically we're able to we're we're, we're able to get you going a, a lot faster. Um, generally, after surgery, you don't require pain medicines like narcotic pain medicines. Over the counter medicines like Tylenol and ibuprofen generally treat patient's pain. We can give you a prescription for some oral anti-inflammatories such as Celebrex after surgery. You may get a prescription for pain medicines just in case, but most people bring them back without having ever taken uh, more than a couple pain medicines uh, or pain pills. And so uh, it's been really uh, a very painless procedure. Um, and of course, uh, you know, with the surgery, we can diagnose your problems, we can treat your problems, and generally people won't need any more surgeries. If it's an arthritic problem, we're there to clean it up. There may be uh, continued problems with, with this, uh, arthritis, but generally people do uh, uh, very well and not having to have another procedure after the, the needle arthroscopy. And then of course, uh, coverage by insurance. Needle arthroscopy is covered by insurance. Um, we would have to go through a, a, a pre-certification, uh, pre which our team takes care of that on our end. We work on that all for you. Um, uh, Medicare and private insurance pays for a needle arthroscopy in the, in the uh, surgery center. Um, some insurance companies do require you to go undergo certain uh, treatments prior to authorizing an, a surgery. And so they may require you to have an MRI. They may require you to do some physical therapy, um, but that would be insurance dependent. Um, certainly our team is very experienced at this, having done this surgery over, uh, over 40 to almost 50 times now. Uh, we're very experienced at, 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 at insurance coverage and getting uh, the process um, going. If you have questions about this, uh, I've listed a phone number here uh, for, for those, and we'll, we'll have other numbers here as we go forward. Um, so as we, as we kind of start to wrap up on needle arthroscopy, um, you know, the next step would be calling our office and requesting an appointment with me to talk about needle arthroscopy. Um, again, I'm very excited about this because I think this is the way arthroscopy is going. I think there will be, um, you know, as this becomes more mainstream and uh, people are, are ready to do arthroscopy awake, I think that this will become uh, kind of the standard way we do arthroscopy. I think that having uh, anesthesia um, and having the recovery from anesthesia is not as attractive for patients. And so uh, in my mind, uh, having the awake surgery, having immediate diagnosis, having treatments uh, without incisions, Band-aids for for uh, for dressings and being able to walk and move right away uh, is really appealing. Uh, and so I think that this is kind of uh, the wave of the future. I think that this is something that that can really uh, be a benefit to to you as a patient. Um, and and I really hope that if uh, if this is interested to you, that you would take this number and give me a call. You can scan the QR code uh, and. Um, and hopefully we can talk and see about getting you feeling better uh, with a needle arthroscopy. Uh, with that being said, uh, we are ready for some Q&A. So I'm going to see. Um, let's see. So one of the questions was, what kind of physical restrictions are there after the procedure? And that would be... Um, Really, um, we would really want you to um, take it easy for the first couple of days. There would be, um, uh, you know, just stick to walking. We wouldn't want you to be in the gym over the first couple of days. Usually the first seven to 10 days, we want you just to kind of uh, really be minimal activities um, like walking. Some people will do exercise bike to help with range of motion and swelling. Um, but, but the restrictions may be 
limited, uh, kind of dependent on what the surgery you have. Uh, it would be uh, discussed at the time of surgery while we're going over things. We would certainly have that discussion during the procedure on, um, uh, on you know, what we need to do. Let's see, it sounds like there's a few questions coming in. Uh, one question was, is this uh, something that's only done in knees? The, the, the needle arthroscopy is certainly something that can be done in every joint. I primarily do knee and shoulders. Um, knees have been where we've started. And like I said, I've done over 40 knee needle arthroscopies. I do think there is a role for, um, uh, for our needle arthroscopy in the shoulder. Uh, certainly our, my partners here at Columbia Orthopedic Group are doing it in the wrist. They're doing it in the, the ankle. Um, and so th there are other, all other joints can be assessed with this. Um, but primarily right now we're just starting with knees. Uh, one question was, um, do you need to start with your, your, uh, another doctor before you come to see me? And, and I think, no, I, I would certainly welcome you to make a phone call and, uh, you know, make an appointment with me to start talking about your knee pain so we can, uh, start treating you, whether that's with a needle arthroscopy or with, you know, therapies or other, uh, treatments, but, but no, you do not have to be referred in to, uh, to see me. Uh, some of this, some of the questions are, uh, you know, regarding uh, arthritis and, and bone on bone and, and certainly um, needle arthroscopy may be something for people with bone on bone arthritis, but it certainly would not be a cure. If you have, uh, you know, completely worn away your cartilage, a, a needle arthroscopy would be a cleanup type surgery, but may not, may, it certainly would not, I would not be telling you that I can resolve the bone on bone arthritis. And so, Sometimes that may be too far gone for a needle arthroscopy. Um, but if you're having locking and catching in your knee and there's loose pieces that are associated with, with arthritis, you know, we can be treating that with a needle arthroscopy. In some ways though, uh, a needle arthroscopy may not be for someone who is completely bone on bone. Uh, it looks like the questions are starting to slow down, so uh, we'll we'll go ahead and um, wrap up. Um, I appreciate your guys' time. I hope you enjoyed uh, learning about needle arthroscopy. Again, this is something that I'm I'm passionate about because I think this could help a lot of people, and I think that um, if you're one of those, I encourage you to give me a call. Um, and um, so with that, we'll go ahead and end and. Um, and I thank you for your time.